That's twice in two days, actually, that I am building something so huge that I don't even fit next to it. Welcome to Personal Rig 2015 Upgrade Part 4. So if you've been following along up till now, I've introduced the hardware. I have introduced the, I don't remember what the second video was about. I have introduced, yes, my friends, the birth of the case, right? The second one was designing it. And now I am finally going to build it. FreshBooks is the super simple invoicing solution that lets you get organized, save time, and get paid faster. Check out the link in the video description to try it for free. So this was a bit of a roller coaster of a build for a variety of reasons. It started out actually, like I was really excited because I had this great concept. I've designed the case from scratch with help from Taryn and ProtoCase and like, it finally arrived and I'm like, yeah, I've got this new concept for taking my system and putting it in a completely different room to achieve true silence. And then I looked at my old rig and I was like, it's actually kind of hard to say goodbye. I've been using that case, that TJ07BW for nine years. It was a gift from my then girlfriend, now wife. I have polished it. I have dremeled it and cut it. I have painted it. I have stripped all the paint. I have painted it again. And we have been through a lot. And between that and the radiator in the front, that's my first ever water cooling radiator that I've been using for 12 years. I, I'm leaving behind some of the pieces of like my PC enthusiast history that actually ended up meaning a little bit more to me than I had originally thought that they did. But um, hey, the build's gotta go on, so it started with carefully extracting the motherboard, being really careful not to chip that extremely fragile paint job that I gave it way back in this controversial video here, and grabbing some of the components that I'm gonna carry with me. So the CPU, the 5960X 8 core, that's coming with me. So is that gold-plated Apogee block from SwiftTech, and actually, this is a funny one, my optical drive is coming with me because it handles CDs, DVDs, HD DVD, and Blu-ray all in one drive. Not to mention it has LightScribe. Yes, I'm sure someone somewhere on earth cares about LightScribe. One thing that won't be coming with me is these UV LEDs. These are the worst lighting solution I have ever encountered. They stop working within one to two weeks and then the UV light actually causes the resin to, 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 to turn to like stone and crack. It's ridiculous. So, the RAM's new. Here we've got 64 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinums. I installed them the way that I do install RAM. Not a whole lot to say about that. The radiator was a whole other story. This was a tight fit at the front. And it actually took quite a while to get the cables for the front panel connectors as well as front USB kind of out of the way enough to get it just barely wedged in there. And then I equipped it with three of those LTT Edition Noctua NFF12 fans. Now these are pretty quiet fans, but honestly, I'm the kind of person where if this system was actually sitting next to my head on my table, I would be fan controlling them, but I ended up not carrying the T-balancer forward and I'm just using two of these little Molex to three fan connector cables that Cable Mod made up for me with, uh, <laughs> turns out they actually kind of screwed them up a little inadvertently. They didn't screw them up, they're fine, but they're three pin. Whereas the fans are four pins, so they didn't fit. So I had to cut them and then hot glue them together to secure the cables. Anyway, it's all fine, it's all good. So my point is that I would normally use a fan controller, but I didn't have to because the whole point of this build is to have it in a room away from me. The SSD was the next thing I tackled while I was waiting for the glue gun to warm up, and this was a bitch. I could not get the stock cooler off. I even tried a heat gun. Finally, I resorted to a hobby knife to cut the thermal adhesive on the NAND chips. I mean, damn, even then it was hard to pry the thing off. The good news though, is that the results are definitely worth it. EK, you never cease to amaze me. Liquid cooling and SSD, who'd have thunk it? The other front radiator was, I thought, <laughs> going to be the hardest part of this build. It needed to be precisely cut for the hardline tubing to get exactly the right length to sit in between them. I'm running them in parallel. And even once I got that right, 
tightening down the collars on the fittings was a freaking nightmare. The good news is that monsoon tubing kit that was provided by Performance PCs is freaking awesome. So I used it to cut the tubing to exactly that right length. It did take a couple tries even so. Then with some very careful and tedious fussing around with the mounts because the rad had to be slid into place from front to back and then the tubing had to be pushed in from back to front and basically I learned a valuable lesson about if I were to design this case again I would definitely not do it this way but I eventually got it in there and by the end of it it was not leaking. Speaking of not leaking and awesome freaking stuff recommended by Performance PCs, this Monsoon Reservoir. I mean, I could talk to you guys about mounting it or whatever with screws, but instead, I'm just gonna talk about how balls to the wall amazing it looks. It uses Monsoon's modular system, so you can actually configure it any number of different ways, and they kinda asked me what I wanted to do, and I went, gee, that looks complicated. You figure something out and send it to me. So they sent it with cathodes for the bottom that I actually ended up taking out, since I didn't really have anywhere to put an inverter, and I wanted to go with UV LED lighting anyway, so, so I took those out, but even then, holy crap, it looks so cool. There's a ton of options for inlets and outlets. There's a lot of flexibility, sort of once I get to my tubing and the D5 pump goes right into the end with this like sick metal cover on it. And it all comes together really nicely and saves me another tubing run at the same time. Freaking sick. I didn't think anything was gonna impress me more than my old T-Virus reservoir. This one definitely did. On the subject of tubing though, this was a disaster from the start. Complete disaster. The original plan was to hard pipe water cool this thing. So I broke out the monsoon kit again. I got the heat gun. I got the fancy fittings. I started cutting tubing to length, except for one small problem. The block for the 750 SSD is so much lower profile than the GPU block that the bend here ended up being impossible, at least for me. So I had to start evaluating other options, even going as far as to dig up some red angled fittings that were earmarked for a project I never ended up completing. And man, that would have looked awful, but I was desperate trying to come up with some way to plumb that card. Fortunately, by some miracle, I found enough between the random fittings bin and my old system, 90 degree fittings and straight compressions to complete the build if I was willing to go back to flexible tubing, which I mean, sure, the runs aren't as perfect and beautiful and clean looking as they would be with hardline, but there are a lot of benefits to flexible tubing. It is harder for it to leak. It is easier to work with if you ever wanna upgrade. And honestly, I am okay with it. It ended up looking, in my opinion, pretty sick anyway. And if I'm being entirely honest with myself, it's gonna be installed in a server cabinet in a closet anyway. So I'm unlikely to ever see the guts unless I'm working on it. Which leads us finally to the conclusion where I guess a lot of Brandon's sexy B-roll is gonna go. I learned a lot about a lot of things. I especially learned a lot about designing a case. It is not as easy as the case designers out there like George from Corsair make it look. I did a lot of things right. Actually, this was Monsoon's idea, having a fill port on the side of the system in order to make this thing so easy to fill. Freaking awesome. I personally like the front panel that was painted by our neighbor over here at Linus Media Group. Uh, he does like helicopter repair and apparently airbrushing on the side. I love the front panel. I love the concept of the water-cooled rack mount case, but man, there were a lot of little things I could have done to make my life easier in terms of planning out the tubing runs better, in terms of planning out the radiator installation better. But the good news is now that the system is actually built, I think it looks fantastic. I can't wait to install it. And it and my wife's system and the new NAS and all that stuff. So there is gonna be a part five of Personal Rig Update 2015. But it is not this day. Today is done. It's 2.40 in the morning. I am ready to go home. Today is done and it is finally built and I am actually very happy with it. And I hope you guys are happy too. 
So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, and maybe even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, instructions for which are in the little eye in the corner, buying a cool shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution, you get a little contributor badge on the forum. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top right corner to check out Seven Gamers, One CPU, the video that I just did. Well, depending on when you're watching this, I might have done it a long time ago if you're watching this 10 years in the future where I have seven gaming rigs running off of a single box. It's freaking bananas.